this video I want to talk about different ways of creating movement over a minor 7 flat 5 or half diminished 7th chord. The first thing that I want to talk about is the use of upper extension triads over the minor 7 flat 5 chords. Now Barry Harris used to teach that an A minor 7 flat 5 chord, A, C, E flat and G is the same as a C minor 6 chord. They contain exactly the same notes. And he therefore said that when you're playing on an A minor 7 flat 5 chord, you can create movement using the C minor 6 diminished scale. In other words, alternating C minor 6 chords with diminished 7 chords. So he said you could play those same chords, but start them on the A. In the intro, I was playing over a 2-5-1 chord progression in the key of G minor. Remember, in a minor key, chord 2 is a minor 7 flat 5. So let's look at what I played over A minor 7 flat 5. First of all, I did that movement with my right hand. Let's look at the notes that I'm playing. The left hand is simply a shell of the chord, just the root, the fifth and the seventh. I'm deliberately missing the third out. I'll explain why in a minute. Let's look at what I played in the right hand. Started off with that voicing. It's got a lot of tension in it. If we look at what I'm playing in the right hand on its own, it's a G major triad in second inversion. So why does that work on an A minor seven flat five chord? Well, Barry Harris would have explained that by saying that the note G is part of the chord. It's the seventh, so that obviously works. The D and the B, he would say, have been borrowed from the diminished seventh chord in the minor six diminished seventh scale. There's the diminished seventh chord and it contains the notes B and D. Now, really, they function as upper appoggiaturas. D being an upper appoggiatura to C and B to A. That's why I've missed C out of the left hand, because if I put it in, I think that's a little bit too tense myself. You get that clash in the middle. To a certain degree, this kind of thing is subjective and some people may think that's absolutely fine. I just think it's a bit too tense. I prefer it like that. You might think then, well, how come we've still got the B sounding against the A? Well, that's partly to do with the distance that they are apart. They're a good distance apart, but also to do with the, the fact that the B is right at the top and the A is at the bottom. Now, I then went to this voicing. So, if I look at the right hand now, that's an F major chord in second inversion. So, I've had two major triads, just moving by step, both in second inversion. Just like on dominant seventh chords, these upper structure triads tend to work best in first and second inversion rather than in root position. There's just one note in the F major triad that I'm playing in the right hand that isn't in the A minor 7 flat 5 chord, and that is the F. And once again, Barry Harris would have explained that by saying that has been borrowed from the diminished 7th chord. There is the F in the diminished 7th chord. So that works nicely. And then I went on to this chord. In the last lesson in this series, I explained how you can use this kind of voicing over a dominant seventh chord to create tension and movement. In this instance, though, I'm using this voicing over an A minor seven flat five chord. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm taking a diminished seventh chord from the C minor six diminished seventh scale. That's the diminished seventh chord. I'm taking the next to the top note out, putting it down an octave, 
making a drop two voicing and then I'm moving the D up a step to E. Now E is the next note up in the diminished scale. So you could say it has been borrowed from the diminished scale. So I'm using that as a passing chord. I then use what we call parallel motion. I move everything down one semitone and another semitone. And that takes me to exactly the same voicing, but this time on a D7 chord. And then I go through all the four different positions that you can play that in on the D7 chord. And then finally, resolve this onto the tonic minor, G minor six. Remember that in a minor key, chord one is either a minor six or a minor chord with a major seven. That would be with the F sharp. I've opted for the minor six chord. If you look at the voice leading on the last two chords there, everything moves smoothly by step, which makes a nice resolution. Let's look at another example now of how you can create movement over a minor seven flat five chord. What I just played was a two five one chord progression in the key of C minor. Chord two is D minor seven flat five. Now Barry Harris would have said that D minor seven flat five is the same chord as F minor six. It contains the same notes and he would have said that therefore you can use the F minor 6 diminished 7th scale which is when you alternate F minor 6 with diminished 7th chords to create movement over a D minor 7 flat 5 chord. So the first voicing that I played was now the E and the G are from the diminished seventh chords in the F minor six diminished seventh scale. And they function as upper appoggiaturas to the D and the F, which are simply chord notes. If you look at the notes there, that's just an inversion of D minor seven flat five. Now, when we got onto the dominant seventh chord, those two notes actually come from the A flat minor six diminished seventh scale. Now, I talked about how you can use that scale to create tension and movement over a G7 chord in a previous video in this series. I'll put a link in the description below to all the other videos in this series. By the way, Barry Harris would have often called it something like this. The long and the short. He would call that a short voicing and that a longer one. Let's look at another example. was a 2-5-1 chord progression in the key of F minor. Chord 2 in F minor is G minor 7 flat 5. Barry Harris would have said that that is the same chord as B flat minor 6. It contains the same notes and therefore you can use the B flat minor 6 diminished 7 scale to create movement over it. So on the G minor seven flat five chord, I started off by looking at that voicing. It's just a G minor seven flat five in second inversion. I took the G out and put it at the bottom to make it a drop two voicing. But instead of playing it like that straight away, I moved the top note and the bottom note up a step, borrowing a note, 
from the diminished seventh chord in this scale. So the diminished seventh chord is that one. So I've borrowed the C and the A from that and played it like that. And then they both resolve onto the chord notes. So once again, we've got upper appoggiaturas resolving onto chord notes. I then went to lower appoggiaturas by once again using notes from the diminished seventh chord and then back to the chord note. So we get tension, resolution, tension, resolution. When I went on to the C7 chord, I played that voicing, which is the one that I was talking about at the beginning of this video and that I explained in the last video. And again, it creates a very nice colourful tense sound. And then I went on to a sharp and ninth, flat and ninth, going to a tonic minor, uh, an F minor six chord with a ninth as well. Hope you found this video useful. If you did and you haven't done so so far, I'd be really glad if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I always appreciate any comments that you may have or questions. If you want to leave those, I would be only too happy to answer them. Thank you. See you in the next video.